Good morning, church family, and Merry Christmas. Sunday morning, we're meeting a little bit different than uh, perhaps, well, we're not used to this anymore. But I'm glad that we can meet this way. I know that this morning, there's a lot involved in a Christmas day, perhaps gift giving, perhaps some traveling. Uh, we've had an adventure these past few days, haven't we? Uh, with the snow that's come, um, the cold weather, the wind, uh, I hope that today finds you well, even if circumstance seems to be working against you. I know that today means a great deal more than giving and receiving gifts. Um, <clears throat> May God bless you today. May God keep you close today as you remember what this day is really all about. Uh, celebration and remembrance of the greatest gr gift that we have ever received. Not a gift we gave. There's nothing that we can give or nothing we can do to receive it, to, ex to, to earn it, <clears throat> but it was something that we were given. And I, and I hope today that you're able to pause in the midst of whatever you're going through and dealing with and um, reflect on that. Now, before we get into this Christmas message, um, I want to do two things. I want to pray. I pray this prayer of invitation, this thing we've been praying for months. I don't know when it started. I can't remember. But this prayer that we've been praying for months to invite God to work in our lives, especially in the midst of today. Let's not take today for granted. We're not meeting in person, but we certainly are meeting. And so we want to pray and ask God to come and speak to us. And then I want you to get your Bibles. But let's pray first. To you, O oh Lord, we lift up our soul, and you we trust, O oh God, our Father. Do not let us be put to shame, nor let any who are against us, including ourselves, triumph over us. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. Show us your ways, O oh Lord. Teach us your paths and guide us in your truth, and teach us. For you are God, our Savior, and our hope is in you all day long. Father, glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Ready, set, go. Go get your Bibles. I'll wait. It doesn't matter which one or what version, although if you're trying to find your favorite, that's fine. <clears throat> if you're trying to do this on your phone, you're not going to be able to watch this and do this on your phone. So, Maybe you got one for Christmas. You're, you're going to go grab that one and you're ripping open the packaging because you haven't done that yet. Uh, maybe you don't have a Bible around and that's okay. If you don't, it's all right. I'll be sharing from God's word nonetheless. But if you have it, it's better to have it in front of you. If this were Jeopardy, that music would be playing in the background while they are trying to answer, to give the question to the answer. To the to question to the answer? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Ready? Okay. <laughs> uh, the reason I did that is every morning f with our two youngest, Heston and Lily, for as long as I can remember, we have read from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, before any gift unwrapping and stocking, unstuffing uh, begins. Uh, we... Our older boys may have been there, but I cannot remember when we started this tradition of reading Luke 2. And so Nick and Mitch, forgive me if I didn't include you there. You may well have certainly been a part of those, those days. Um, so before any of the gift unwrapping, before any of the stocking unstuffing begins, we, we always read Luke 2, um, the birth of Jesus from, from Luke. And, uh, of course, after we grab a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a cherished tradition that keeps our hearts and minds focused on what this season of gift giving is, is really about. <clears throat> the, the greatest gift you or I, the greatest gift humanity has ever been given. The Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord. 
He is, for those who believe in him as Lord and Savior of their lives, he is freedom from sin and life everlasting. There is no greater gift than that. I've read this text a lot, Luke 2, verses 1 to 20. I've read it a lot over these years. Uh, You may be thinking or saying the same. Uh, However, a few weeks ago, I I saw something in a different light. Uh, Something popped off the page in a way it hadn't before, which is, which is what we'll be focused on this morning. It, it won't be your typical, typical Christmas message, but it will be, I hope, as much a gift to you um, as, it is, as, it, as it is and as it was to me. And so Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his town to register. So Joseph went, also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. That's twice, lying in a manger. Keep track of that. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Father, we just ask that you bless the reading of your word and this sharing from my heart, what I feel is a direction from you for us this Christmas day. In Jesus' name we pray. As I mentioned, manger is mentioned three times in this uh, 20 verse scripture. Um, It's not mentioned because the manger is important. It's mentioned because the manger is a signpost. It's something that God, through his angels, the Lord, is pointing toward. It's something to it's something to solidify that what they're being told is true. (laughs) And so the manger isn't necessarily as important as the fact that it's mentioned often and that what was said was what was heard and seen. Now, manger is a trough, um, like like a water trough, feeding trough for animals which is in itself interesting, but I'm not going to go into all that. That's not what this morning's about. I want you to focus on Luke 2, verse 20. Okay, so go there. If you aren't, go there. It says, the shepherds returned. So they saw all these things, right? They, they returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been 
told. Heard. What does it mean? Well, heard is the past tense of hear, and it means perceived by the ear or learned by hearing. But heard also means listened to. It means paid attention to. What does told mean? (laughs) Told is the past tense of tell and means gave an account or narrative. It means made known by speech or writing. It means to give evidence or be an indication. So, what were the shepherds, what were the sheep herders, as the message calls them, what were they told? Well, they were told that good news of great joy has come for all the people. Salvation has come, is what they were told. Um, They were told that it would be in the town of David, which is Bethlehem. They were told that a Savior was born, Christ the Lord. They They were told that there would be a sign of this, that a baby wrapped in cloths would be lying in a manger. Now, lying in the Greek, kemai, means to lay down or be laid. Okay, a baby would be laid down or a baby would be laid um, or would be lying down in a manger, in a trough, which really isn't all that interesting in this context. The baby was lying down. Babies are laid down, right? But what's interesting is it's the same word that Paul uses when he writes in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. The connection between Luke 2 and the baby as a sign being, being found lying in a manger and what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 3 that no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, Luke 2, chapter, uh, Luke 2, verse 20, which is Jesus Christ, the Lord. Anyway, the shepherds were told, they were told, good news of great joy will be for all people. You'll find it in the, him in the town of Bethlehem. David, in the town of David, a Savior born, Christ the Lord, and a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger is the sign. They were told, and then they heard and seen what they were told. They heard, remember what heard means, listened to or paid attention, right? They were given evidence, they were, they were given an indication, and they listened to or paid attention. What did they hear? What did they heard? In the town of David, Bethlehem, this would happen. Savior born, he is Christ the Lord. And there was the sign. They heard a baby wrapped in cloths uh, would be lying in a manger. But what did they see? Well, they went to Bethlehem because they were told and they heard. They listened to. So they went there. They didn't go to another town. They went to Bethlehem. And they found Mary and Joseph, and they found a baby. How did they find them? We don't know. Searched all the houses, searched all the inns, finally found one that didn't have room. And then someone, oh, yeah, they're in the, they're in the, uh, the, the, the animal uh, barn downstairs. <laughs> um, so they found Mary and Joseph and the baby. They saw them, and they saw a baby was lying in a manger. So everything they heard They listened to everything they were told. They heard and they listened to. And then they went and they saw everything. And their response was glorifying and praising God for what they had heard and seen because, because it was what they had been told. They praised and glorified God because what they had heard, listened to, and then saw, because they listened to it, was what they had been told. That's why they praised and glorified God. Now, why does this matter on Christmas morning? You're probably eager to get on with your morning, eager to get on with your day, eager to have breakfast. Maybe 
get some more coffee because you finished your cup? Why does this matter on Christmas morning? Well, this book. Well, maybe your Bible, but a Bible. This book. This book. This is why that matters today on Christmas morning. This book. We don't get uh, angels that come and visit us and tell us what we would see and then uh, hear and then go see and then tell others what we saw. We don't have that. In Luke chapter 2, verse 17, um, from the message, they write, seeing was believing when the shepherds saw all that they had been, that they saw all that they heard of what they had been told. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said. The NIV says, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning, they spread the word concerning what had been told them. Now we don't have angels to come and tell us, but what we do have is this book, which tells us not only about Jesus' birth, but about life way before his birth, about life during and after his ministry, his, his death, and his resurrection. And it tells about life to come. What did grown-up, resurrected Jesus say about seeing and believing anyway? Do you remember? The, the shepherds saw and believed. When they had seen what they were told, they spread the word concerning what had been told them. They believed it because they were told it, they heard it, and they saw it. But what did grown-up Jesus say about seeing and believing? Do you remember? Jesus speaking to Thomas, and really for all to hear at that moment, um, he said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. But, but how can we believe without having seen? Have you ever asked that question? How do we, how do we hear and see based on what we've been told? Well, because we, like the shepherds, have been told. We have been told. It's this book. <laughs> this book is next to Christ's coming today, which we remember and celebrate. This book, next to the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus sent, who, who God sent in Jesus' physical place to be with us all ways, to be with all of us at the same time, working and speaking in our lives. This book, aside from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, this book is the greatest gift we've ever been given. This book tells us. This book is our, the angels sent to us, and it tells us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not die but will have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. God's word, which is just as we've been told, points us toward salvation, a way made where there was no way to be free from sin and made right before God. This, this book leads us and tells us Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. God's word, which is just as we've been told, gives an accurate account of Jesus so that we might believe in him and so have and receive eternal life. This book tells us, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John, 5, chapter, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. 
God's word, which is just as we've been told, gives assurance of our salvation if we follow after Jesus in relationship through faith. This book tells us, your, lamp is, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light on my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. God's word, which is just as we've been told, gives us spiritual and life guidance. This book tells us, Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. God's word, which is just as we've been told, helps us defeat temptation and provides all important spiritual sustenance. A funny resource, gotquestions.org. <laughs> they share, not only does Jesus profess that the word of God is more important than physical food, but he also refutes Satan's temptation by quoting from God's word. This book tells us, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. God's word, which is just as we've been told, gives us purpose and direction as we live out our faith and relationship in Jesus. We're to be examples of his who lead others in making the decision to be examples of his, who lead others in making the decision to be examples of his. But not just by making disciples, by being followers who live like Jesus lived. This book tells us, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This love not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 17. God's word, which is just as we've been told, shows us how, how to be in our commission to make disciples. It's not just about making, like we're some sort of a creator, but about living in such a way as to reflect his image and his character. The question is, and you know the answer, <laughs> how do we love? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. This book tells us God's word which is just as we've been told, tells us of his never failing love and for us how to be that love for all others to see and know. God's word, which is just as we've been told, is God's self-revelation to, to humanity, to us. The Bible, God's word, 
which is just as we've been told, tells us who we are and tells us of our sin and of God's plan of salvation in Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ. God's word, which is just as we've been told, will guide and direct you, pointing you just like the shepherds on that first Christmas morning to the Savior who has been born who is Christ the Lord. But the ba- great big condition, the, the, the big caveat to all of this, is you must be in the word to know what you've been told. And so this Christmas day, go to God's word. As the new year approaches, go to God's word see and hear what you've been told and then glorify him for all the things you have heard and seen from what what you have in God's word because it is just as we've been told. God bless you. I pray that today, this Christmas morning, you feel his presence. You glorify and praise him for all that he has done and all that he longs to do in your life. I love you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning and for today. Lead us as you led those shepherds, Lord. You've told us, help us to hear and help us to see so that we may believe all that we've been told and so that others can come to know what we do. You are our salvation. You are our ever-present help in time of need. You are all and you are everything we could ever ask for. Your life itself. Help us to be seen. Help us um, help us be you, your example so that others can see that truth as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And because I know you'd be wanting this, (laughs) let me pray a prayer blessing as you go. Hands out to receive as I pray this prayer of blessing. You, You need it on Christmas Day as much as any other day. Be safe also. May you, by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way open to you through the curtain in Christ's body, Draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having your heart sprinkled to cleanse you from a guilty conscience. May you hold unswervingly to the hope professed for he who promised is faithful. And may you consider how to spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see his day approaching. Merry Christmas. God bless you and I love you. And may God's peace be with you and go before you.